Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knott's Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we are going to be making this funky fun circular rug. This rug can be made with whatever you have left in your scraps, in your stash, um, any odd singular balls that you have, and really just kind of have fun with it and make something really cool and funky. You can also make this rug any size from a small hot pad to uh, a very small maybe bathroom rug or even to a really large living area rug. You can make this project with one strand or two strands held together. Um, with this one that you're seeing here, I used a single strand of bulky yarn with a five millimeter hook. And so we want it to be really strong and durable, whether it's a hot pad or a rug. It does have a flat backing and it's pretty heavy, so it should stay in place. Now we have um, hardwood floors, so rugs are great and we also have pets, large dogs, cats. Um, running around so rugs do tend to slip and I did find that this was the best rug gripper that I have found it's called X fasten and it's like a double-sided tape um, our floors are really old from like the 1930s and it doesn't do any damage it comes up really nice and neat um, so I would recommend using this it's the best one that we've found now I'm going to show you today the first few repeats and then essentially the remaining part of the rows are just going to be repeats um, with the, the increase that I show you. Each round is going to consist of two rows essentially A and B. This is a folded treble crochet and then underneath that holding them together is a double crochet and that's what the back of your rug is going to look like. I will go ahead and put the written pattern linked in the description box below. I will also leave a link to Jolie Knotts Crochet on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to join the Jolie Knotts community group on Facebook. Next week, we will see a square coming out of this. So we do have a square that's still in testing and I'll have a bunch of photos to show you guys also and the back is very similar as far as it being flat. This one is a hot pad and I'll show you guys a whole bunch of different ones of those as well. So the yarn that I am using today is Ice Yarns. This is somewhat of like a tube spun yarn that I thought would be perfect for a rug and I had several colors of this in my stash. So this is called Cakes Air. It's 50% acrylic, 50% polyamide. It is a bulky five weight yarn and I used a five millimeter hook and there's about 180 meters per cake. And uh, for this large one, I want to say I used about seven or eight cakes and it measures 36 inches round. So the yarn that I'm going to be using today is a Lily's Sugar and Cream. Um, this is a medium four weight cotton with a recommended hook size of five millimeters. We're going to use a four millimeter if you're using a four weight cotton because you want that strong sturdiness. And I mean, you could use any cotton you like. If you're using a rug, of course, you don't have to use cotton, but I'm gonna make a hot pad, so I'm gonna use cotton. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna be using one strand with a four millimeter hook. You can use two strands with like a five and a half or a six millimeter hook or bulky yarn with a five millimeter hook. Um, those are just options and opinions. The gauge really isn't necessary. So I'm gonna take a slip knot, but I'm gonna make a magic ring. So my slip knot is gonna be backwards. So what that means is I'm just gonna take the end of my tail instead of my working yarn. 
and use this as my ring and then when I pull my tail end it will cinch my ring together. I'm going to go ahead and get my yarn set up, chain two, that does not count as a stitch, every row we do is going to start with a chain two or a chain three and it's not going to count as a stitch. Now we're going to place 13 double crochets into our ring, yes that's 13 and it's not 12, it will be pulling quite a bit so if you do 12 it's going to kind of uh, curl to where you don't want it to curl. So we're doing 13. Okay, so now that I've got my 13 double crochets, I'm just gonna pull the tail end to cinch up my ring. And before I cut that off, I'm gonna want to weave that in and make sure that I have it tied off and weaved in. Slip stitch to the first double crochet. Okay, so that is round one. Round two, we are going to chain three, which is not going to count as a stitch. And now into the front loop only of every double crochet, we're gonna put two treble crochets. So this is gonna be round two A. You're also gonna need 13 stitch markers. I forgot to tell you that earlier. So we're going to place two treble crochets into the front loop only of each double crochet. Okay, so here is the end of round 2A. A is going to be our treble round, so that's where we're going to be doing our increases. And then B is going to be just pinning down the trebles. So slip stitch to the first treble crochet. And now what we're going to do is slip stitch the back loop only of our first treble crochet to the back loop only of the stitch that it was made in. So remember you only did a front loop only treble crochet and you left the back loop open. So now we're going to pin these to the back loop. So a slip stitch first, chain two, that does not count as a stitch. And now we're going to double crochet through both of those loops, your first treble crochet and your first double crochet. Now the next stitch is also made from that same stitch because we put two. So we're going to double crochet through the back loop only of the next treble crochet and the same double crochet it was created from. So we'll have two double crochets into the double crochet from round one. The same way that the treble crochets were created. Two were made from it and two will be pinned to it by double crocheting. So go ahead and continue that and I'll meet you back for the next round. Okay, so I just finished round 2B which is just the double crochet is pinning down at the treble crochet. So it should look like this. The back should look like this. Okay, so now we're just going to slip stitch to our first stitch to join. And now we're going to do our treble crochets again. And remember I said this is our increase round. So what we're going to do here, this is where you're going to need your stitch markers. I just 
picked up a big bag of stitch markers because I seem to lose mine all the time. I just got these off Amazon. These are my favorite kind because they lock. The other ones tend to fall out for me. So I'll leave the link down below if you want that also. They're pretty cheap. I got like 200 pieces for like $8 or something like that. Those will last me forever. Okay. So now, you know, if you do typical circular increases, we put two in every stitch on the row before. Now we're going to put two, one, two, one, two, one. Two, one. And now what we're going to do with our stitch markers is put one stitch marker into every other stitch. So you're going to need 13 stitch markers. One into every other stitch. Okay. So now we have all our stitch markers. We're going to leave those there for now. We're going to chain three. I'm working it, chain three doesn't count as a stitch, remember. And uh, now we're gonna work into the front loop only, again, of all of these double crochets. And all of the stitches that have stitch markers, we're gonna place two in them. This is gonna be loud on camera now. Two treble crochets into this marked stitches, front loop only one treble crochet into the next one. It'll get easier as your piece gets bigger because one, all the stitch markers won't be in your palm. And two, you'll actually need them. It's a little bit harder or easier to find the proper stitches to increase. So go ahead and work two treble crochets into the front loop only of all of your marked stitches and one into the next one and I'll meet you back for the next round. Okay, so here I am at the end of my treble round. I have my two treble crochets into each marked stitch and I'm gonna slip stitch to the first treble crochet to join. And now remember, this is the round that we're pinning our treble crochets back down. So we're gonna slip stitch through the first stitch and through the back loop only of the marked stitch. Chain two, that does not count as a stitch. And double crochet into that same stitch in the marked stitch. So there are two treble crochets made from each marked stitch and that's what we're going to pin down. So we're pinning down two treble crochets that were created from those marked stitches. So now we're going to move that stitch marker into the back loop only of the first double crochet made into that stitch. Double crochet to pin down the next stitch. And now we're at the marked stitch again as our next one where we're going to pin two. And then move that stitch marker up to the first double crochet made. And then repeat that. So we're pinning one into the next stitch. We're pinning two into our marked stitch. And then we move our stitch marker up to the first double crochet made. So go ahead and continue working that around and I will meet you back for the next round. Okay, so at the end of your double crochet row, you're gonna slip stitch to your first stitch and then we're just gonna repeat those two rows, the treble crochet row 
and the double crochet row. So by chaining three and treble crocheting twice into the front loop only of each marked stitch and once in between those and that's how you're going to increase. We're increasing in the treble crochet rows and then we're just using double crochets to pin those down so that they're folded over. So you're starting with 13 double crochets, two treble crochets into the front loop only of each stitch and then pinning them down with double crochets. Alright, so just keep on doing that, make it bigger and bigger and as large as you would like. So essentially in each round you are growing to one extra stitch in between your stitch markers. So you'll have two stitches in between for round three, three stitches in between for round four, etc. Thank you everyone for watching Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and we'll see you next time.